Pitch to Darby, might get it, and he's in for the score, and the Thundering Herd has taken a 23-10 lead, and there is much joy <laughs> on the far side of the field. Look at that. I don't think any, any fans have left this football game, at least on that side of the stadium. Five, four, three, two, one. It's all over, and the Thundering Herd has beaten Appalachian State 24 to 10. George Chomp is hosted to the shoulders of his players. Marshall is going to the 1AA championship next week in Pocatello, Idaho. The greatest win in Marshall football history came last Saturday as the Thundering Herd avenged its regular season loss to the Appalachian State Mountaineers 24 to 10. As the thousands of Marshall fans flooded onto the field that sunny afternoon, the road to Pocatello and the Division 1AA National Championship lie straight ahead. I don't think it can be one-dimensional as a football team. I think your great football teams are teams that can run and throw and play great, great defense. So uh, what kind of coach I am is largely determined by the material available. I know what I would like to do, and I know what I will do if the material is there. But quite frankly, uh, I like to win. As the Thundering Herd took the field for the first time at the 1987 season, winning was the only thing on the players' minds. They were welcomed by an opening day crowd of 15,000 enthusiastic fans and their first opponent, the Moorhead State University Eagles. Marshall dominated the contest from the beginning as the fans and the rest of the Marshall opponents saw their first demonstration of the air attack as Tony Peterson connected with Mike Marber and Keith Baxter for touchdown passes. And linebacker turned fullback Jerome Hazard blasted through the Eagle defense for the first rushing score. The Marshall defense lived up to Coach Chomp's hope as it collared the Moorhead quarterback six times for losses of 45 yards and held the MSU running game to only 38 total yards on the day. The kicking game sparked the Herd's opening day win as John Mitchell contributed three field goals for the Herd's first nine points. As Marshall thundered to a wet opening day shutout win, 29 to nothing. On the road to Athens, Ohio to meet the Bobcats of Ohio University, on the rain-soaked turf of Heaton Stadium. The potent offensive attack that they built the preceding weekend watched early scoring opportunities slip by. An inspired Bobcat team led by freshman Anthony Thornton mounted drives that punched through a flat Marshall defense. Thornton eluded would-be Marshall tacklers as the Bobcats built an early lead over the Thundering Herd. Tony Peterson continued his personal assault on the record books. He scored his only rushing TD of the season. And he passed for 309 yards and this touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Bobcat defense put the lid on and Marshall even its 1987 record with a 23-15 loss in Athens, Ohio. Week three found Marshall in Richmond, Kentucky at Eastern Kentucky University's Hangar Field. 
EKU Colonels were celebrating their first night football game and the thundering herd spoiled that celebration as Tony Peterson connected on four first half touchdown passes. It was Peterson to Baxter and this one to Mike Barber. And then Tony Peterson connected with Bruce Hammond for another six. And finally to Sean Doctor as Marshall bolted to a 28-17 halftime lead. But the Colonels rallied in the second half and won the game on this last minute field goal. Final score, 37 to 34. September 26th, back home to Fairfield Stadium. And Marshall's offense gave Youngstown State's Penguins all the heat they could handle as Keith Baxter scored on a 10-yard reverse. The Thundering Herd opened with some razzle-dazzle. Sean Doctor came through with this reception on a four-yard touchdown toss from Tony Peterson. Marshall's swarming defense pestered the Penguins all day long, allowing only 78 rushing yards, while Marshall's rushing accounted for three scores and 131 yards on the ground. Marshall picked off this Trenton Likes pass in the third quarter and converted it into another seven points. Marshall got back on the winning track, 38-13 over the Youngstown State Penguins. Marshall opened Southern Conference play as guest of the Furman Purple Paladins and jumped to a 10 to nothing lead on the 16 yard Tony Peterson to Mike Barber pass. The Marshall defense held Furman at bay early with heads up play like this one. Ron Darby races around then through the Paladin defense as he electrifies the crowd with this 20 yard touchdown scamper. Keith Baxter, Marshall's Mr. Touchdown, scored for the fifth straight game on this 38-yard run. But Furman's John Bagwell had a career day and nailed down a Paladin victory with this six-yard touchdown run with only 53 seconds remaining. Marshall mounted a last-ditch drive, but only to see it fall short as time ran out. The final score, Furman 42, the Thundering Herd 36. Next week, the road led to Louisville, Kentucky for a meeting with the Division I Cardinals. A reverse to Keith Baxter at the 10-yard line, and the Thundering Herd struck the Louisville kicking team with a 60-yard return. It was Peterson to Baxter at the Cardinal one that set up a Ron Darby leap into the end zone and an early Marshall lead. After a Cardinal score, the Marshall kicking game again set up the offense just past midfield. From there, the herd drove to the Louisville Five, where Ron Darby took it through the Cardinal defense for another score. Tony Peterson was on target all night as he connected on 25 passes for 286 yards and three touchdowns, including this one to Mike Barber.
The Hood defense accepted the challenge from a powerful Division I offense and kept the pressure on the Cardinals early. And this short pass to Jerry Harris gave Marshall a 28-10 halftime lead. Orville stormed back, however, to take a 31-28 lead in the second half. Then with 151 remaining in the game, the Thundering Herd began its final drive. With precision passing and one timeout, Marshall drove to the Louisville 28-yard line. Peterson was sacked on what looked like the final play of the game. But with less than five seconds on a moving clock, Tony Peterson threw it up for grabs in the end zone, and Keith Baxter made the catch of his life to give the Herd a 34-31 upset victory over the Louisville Cardinals. The Herd had evened its season record at three wins and three losses. Marshall then returned home to Southern Conference play as the Herd faced the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. Inspired by the biggest victory to date and the home crowd, Marshall grabbed a 10-7 halftime lead. Fullback Jerome Hazard scored the Marshall touchdown in that first half. Ron Darby got four of his 97 yards on this touchdown dash. And the Thundering Herd defense shot out the Bucks the rest of the afternoon. Tailback Mike Beasley scored for Marshall in the final period as the herd went on to post a 27-7 Southern Conference victory over East Tennessee. The Kitats of VMI were in Huntington the next week and the Thundering Herd extended its southern hospitality. Marshall scored early on this eight-yard pass to Bruce Hammond and never looked back. Tony Peterson had another outstanding game, throwing the ball for 294 yards and three touchdowns, this one going to Sean Doctor. And another going to tight end Rodney Barnes. Former high school quarterback Mike Barber opened up the Marshall offense for George Chomp as he completed this pass for 27 yards to Sean Doctor as Marshall crushed VMI 42 to 7. Saturday, October 31st in Chattanooga, Marshall goes after its third straight conference win. The Moccasins play gracious host as Keith Baxter takes the opening kickoff, 89 yards for an early 7-0 Marshall lead. The defense behind a hard-charging pass rush shut out UTC in the first quarter. and set up the offense for two more scores to give Marshall a 21 to nothing lead. Tony Peterson passed for two touchdowns, this one 13 yards to Mike Barber. And this one a 12 yarder, again to Mike Barber. And the Herd got the victory, 28 to 26. Marshall came into Boone, North Carolina, owning a four-game winning streak and looking to make it five. A win against Appalachian State could propel the Herd to a conference championship and also a postseason playoff bid. Marshall fell behind early, 14 to nothing. 
but a fired up defense came alive to stop the Mountaineers and the herd took full advantage. Ron Darby slicing through a stingy defense for this 33 yard gain. Tony Peterson capped the drive with a 22 yard touchdown to Keith Baxter. A hard hitting Marshall defense hung tough in the second half, stopping ASU's running game. And passing attack. The herd sacked ASU quarterbacks three times for a minus 23 yards. The Thundering Herd special teams also got in on the act and helped keep the Appalachian State offense bottled up all through the second half. Trailing 17 to seven, Marshall got into field goal range and trimmed the lead to 17 to 10. with freshman Brian Mitchell hitting on this 37-yarder. <laughs> Reggie Giles recovered the ensuing onside kick, and Tony Peterson had one more shot at the end zone. But on fourth and long, a screen pass to Jerome Hazard came up short, and Marshall bowed to conference champion Appalachian State, 17 to 10. Still stinging from the loss to Appalachian State, Marshall returned home and jumped on Western Carolina with his 23-yard scoring strike from Tony Peterson to Sean Doctor. Ron Darby had a big day, picking up 162 yards on 25 carries and scoring three touchdowns. Tony Peterson also had a record-setting day, throwing for 481 yards and three touchdowns. Marshall dominated this lopsided contest, scoring 26 unanswered points. With the defense getting two of those points on this block punt by Ken Green. The Hurt offense scored on big plays like this long pass to Keith Baxter. Marshall also scored on sustained drives. Ron Darby caps off this one with a short touchdown plunge. The defense held the Catamounts to only 16 points in a big 47-16 victory. The win propelled George Chomp's thundering herd in the postseason play and a matchup against James Madison University. An NCAA postseason playoff game at Fairfield Stadium is an unfamiliar sight, but this is not. Tony Peterson to Mike Barber for six points. The herd broke out on top of the James Madison Dukes early, and the defense kept them there. Senior Tony Bolin records one of Marshall's three sacks on the day. As the herd defense kept the pressure on, so did Tony Peterson. 
throwing for 387 yards and four touchdowns. James Madison's wing T offense proved no match for George Chomp's well-prepared defense as JMU managed only 2.7 yards per carry, well under their season average. The Dukes turned the ball over five times to the swarming herd defense. Marshall built a 34 to nothing lead on this 84 yard bomb to Keith Baxter. John Doctor rounded out the herd scoring on this pass in a 41 to 12 route of James Madison. Marshall's first ever victory in postseason play. The second round of the NCAA 1AA playoffs also saw Marshall at home, hosting Big Sky Conference member Weber State. Again, Tony Peterson passes the herd into an early lead with his 14-yard toss to Keith Baxter. The special teams continued to flex their muscle as they blocked two punts, this one going for a touchdown, building Marshall's lead to 20 to nothing. Strong safety Mark Snyder picks off one of seven interceptions the Thundering Herd recorded during the game. And the defense had a stellar performance, allowing just 52 rushing yards on 44 attempts. and sacking Weaver's quarterback eight times. All-American wide receiver Mike Barber threw for two touchdowns. And he was also the recipient of this 30-yarder from Peterson. Marshall rolled to a surprisingly easy victory, 51-23, and a rematch with Southern Conference champion Appalachian State. The herd thundered into Boone, North Carolina to face top-seeded Appalachian State University in the NCAA 1AA playoff semifinal round. Marshall fell behind early in the first quarter, three to nothing, but came storming back with determined running by Ron Darby. And pinpoint passing accuracy from Tony Peterson, hitting Mike Barber with his four-yard touchdown bullet. That gave the herd a 7-3 lead. Again, the defense came through and provided Peterson and company a scoring opportunity that they turned into three points for a 10-3 margin. Juan Darby gained 22 of his 138 yards on this run. And scored from two yards out, 
giving Marshall a 17-3 halftime lead. The Mountaineers cut that deficit to 17-10, but Darby burst over from the six to extend the lead back to 14 points, 24-10. The defense held a powerful Appalachian State offense to just 149 total yards, only 30 on the ground and nine first downs. Marshall, however, racked up 399 total yards, 21 first downs, and most importantly, a 24-10 victory, lifting head coach George Chomp and the thundering herd into the NCAA 1AA championship game in Pocatello, Idaho. December 19th, Holt Arena. The Thundering Herd, 10 and 4, faces a tough 12 and 2 Northeast Louisiana University team for the national championship. Marshall watches Cisco Richard ramble 15 yards for a touchdown as the Indians go on top 7 0 early in the first quarter. Peterson completes this pass to Sean Doctor, setting up a Brian Mitchell field goal of 33 yards, cutting the lead to 7 to 3. Brian Gerald gives the offense the ball, forcing this fumble from Indian quarterback Stan Humphreys. Peterson unloads the bomb to Mike Barber for a 42-yard gain, one of nine catches for 195 yards for the All-American wide receiver. Peterson again goes to the air, finding Bruce Hammond for 19 yards down to the nine. Keith Baxter hauls in this nine-yard pass to give Marshall a 10-7 lead. NLU gets the ball back on this roughing call and goes up 21 to 13 on a score just before halftime. Tony Peterson finds a wide open Mike Barber for a big gain down to the nine. And again for the touchdown, as Marshall comes storming back with the first of 29 third quarter points. A fired up defense again gives a turnover to Peterson. And again, the result is six points and the 27-21 Thundering Herd lead. The lead changed hands as the Indians went back in front, 28-27. However, a potent Marshall air attack drives 80 yards in seven plays to retake the lead, 35-28. The touchdown coming on this 17-yard strike to Bruce Hammond. Sean Pitton grabs this fumble at midfield, and Juan Darby does the rest. Darby gives Marshall a 42-28 lead on this six-yard burst, but Northeast Louisiana behind quarterback Stan Humphrey scores 15 fourth-quarter points to stun the herd for a 43-42 lead. With time running out, Tony Peterson could not pull out the miracle, and Marshall's Cinderella season ends 43-42. The Thundering Herd finishes 10-5, ranked second in the nation, but ranked first in the hearts of all Herd fans. Don't you ever give up on your dreams. 